We'll see you shortly. Thank you, Dennis. Now to a Full Circle exclusive tonight. ABC Action News is going into the heart of a new pilot program launched by St. Petersburg Police. For the first time in the department's history, mental health experts will respond to nonviolent 911 calls. We've been reporting on this issue since the chief announced that program last July. Now ABC Action News reporter Michael Paluska is the only reporter in the Bay Area to follow up with St. Pete PD. He even tagged along as officers responded to 911 calls. And tonight he shows us just how delicate and volatile calls involving mental health can be. The call program here at the St. Petersburg Police Department is one of the most aggressive changes to policing that we have seen across the Bay Area. Those nonviolent 911 calls will be handled by mental health experts, and there is a great need in our community to de-escalate and defuse those tense situations. In fact, just a month after this program was announced last year, a man suffering from mental illness was shot and killed by a St. Pete officer. While checking on a homeless camp in the woods, the evening shift started to pick up. Mental first with no violence. Let us take the suicide route. Did the suicide threat pop up? I don't Not have yet. a suicide threat. Have... They must be still putting the notes in. January, a police officer would have responded to these types of mental health calls. It's okay. We're, we're not, we're, you're not in trouble at all. We're here to do what we can to help you to get you to a safe place. I don't know. What did she tell you? She wanted to harm herself? Yes. So she says, I'm suicidal. I'm help. suicidal, and she had a plan, which is something we always ask. And she had a plan to take pills, and she wanted to go get help. So, you know, that's what we're going to do. Today, on your worst day in St. Petersburg, you now get so much more. I'm a licensed clinical social worker, and I have my master's certification in addiction profession. Travis Atchison is the program director for CALL. His casual polo shirt and calm demeanor immediately sends the message he is not a cop. The badge definitely presents a, a heightened state for an individual. They might have had prior poor experiences. They may have been bay corrected, arrested, things of that nature. So there is that inner trauma associated with the law enforcement response sometimes. So the suicidal calls are the ones that can escalate quickly, but if you see violence, you'll back out. Yeah. I went out with the new call unit for a day and evening shift. During the initial rollout, mental health experts called navigators are embedded with police from the police assisting the homeless unit path for short. Once they work out the kinks and make sure everyone is trained for safety, the navigators will be on their own. I definitely think it gives a better aspect and a better image when these civilian uh, mental health professionals are coming out rather than the, the police department. Sergeant Ryan Hillston wants to break the cycle of taking sick people to jail. It's like a never ending re revolving door. So what we're trying to do is cut that. So these people are getting the help that they need. Is it better to see someone like Travis walk up as opposed to the sergeant? Yes and no. Debbie was a high user of 911. Now she calls Atchison or the 24 hour hotline. So if Debbie ever feels overwhelmed or stressed, like she said, she has a lot of stressors, right? So she gets upset. She can call me and then load on me, right, Debbie? <laughs> <laughs> and he'd be right there. He'd be right there. Once we left Debbie's house, we went to check on a homeless man. No, why not? In the time that took about 20 minutes, she was calling Atchison's phone off the hook. For Debbie, he is her lifeline. I got four calls from her, three voicemails, and then um, I talked to her for about 15 minutes on the way here. The way I look at it, every time she calls me, she's not calling 911. According to police, mental health calls are increasing. From 2019 to present, there were 113 calls for a mentally ill person to a single address, and two people Baker acted one 19 times, the other 17. Thank you. No problem. But when the team isn't working live calls, they're out engaging with the public, guiding people to resources, giving out food and gift cards. You read through this, it's got information on our program, okay? The team wears a lot of hats. You gotta be able to engage in any environment, any time with any individual. Responding to everything from those mental health issues we talked about, juvenile delinquency, complaints about the homeless, people who are drunk and disorderly, and similar problems. But mental health calls can be the most volatile. 
According to a 2015 report by the Treatment Advocacy Center, people with untreated mental illness are 16 times more likely to be killed during a police encounter than other civilians. She was in a fight for her life. On August 7th, 2020, St. Pete Police added to that statistic. A month after announcing the new call program, a lone St. Pete Police officer shot and killed Jeffrey Harzma, a man suffering from mental illness, outside of his condo. The system failed the deceased. And what I mean by that, for two years, we had gone out to this location. For two years, you had police interaction, you had a psychiatrist interaction, and we didn't do anything for the deceased. Law enforcement could only do so much, but what else can we do? I still can't come to grips with how it was described that he was, um, they basically portrayed him as, you know, pretty much being a monster. He wasn't, that wasn't the Jeff that I knew or ever knew. And, I just find the whole thing hard to believe. William Rafferty was Harzma's friend for 25 years. He didn't have any warrants and he didn't have a gun. He's gone and it's gone with the wind. People forgot about it. Rafferty believes St. Pete police bungled the investigation the night he died and during a 2017 incident where Harzma was Baker acted by his psychologist. He was tased by law enforcement and Rafferty says that was a turning point where his friend developed a deep distrust of police. It took a couple months for him to get over that. I mean, imagine police officers barreling in your house for no apparent reason, no crime, and they, you know, manhandle you. Three years later, Harzma had his last run-in with police. The officer-involved shooting was the very first one investigated by a newly formed task force led by the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office. It highlighted multiple errors by the responding officers. Given Harzma's documented history of mental health issues, the report concluded that the matter should have been handled as a mental health call, not a criminal matter. Allison Savarese, the officer who shot and killed Harzma, did not have crisis intervention team mental health training. Multiple witnesses telling investigators they thought Harzma was going to kill the officer. Despite the mistakes, the task force concluded the use of deadly force was justified. After Harzma's death, all officers are now required to have mental health training. And in December, the entire force was outfitted with body cameras. Well, I think it's great they're finally doing something, but unfortunately it happened after my best friend died. If an officer hadn't responded and it was a mental health professional, he, he could be alive today or should be alive. He, he would be alive, I guarantee it. Again, I'm gonna go back to it, I just don't understand. I can't wrap my head around it. Have you tried to hurt yourself other times or just, just right now? other times too. The pilot program for call is funded through September 30th. Social workers like Angela Catton hope it lasts even longer. I was so excited because in my head I had invented this position for myself years ago. Like I saw the need when I worked in case management. So you see the need and I'm like, why don't the police, you know, get some of us to help out de-escalate some of these situations. You know, you hear people getting killed and, you know, I, I could have had an impact in that. So that's what I'm thinking in my head. You comfortable riding with me in my personal vehicle? Yeah. You are? Okay. During this call for a woman threatening suicide, we watched as the team calmed her down, took her to a hospital, then waited to do it all over again for someone else. The objective is to get her help. So we met the objective, in my opinion, you know, we, we, stopped her from killing herself, and we got her help. So that's, that's the goal. In St. Petersburg, Michael Paluska, ABC Action News.